Hello and welcome to Farris vs the Community. This week it was four-wheel drive A-class cars and race number one was at Infineon NASCAR. I, I got a pretty good start from towards the back of the grid. I was having some TV issues in this one. My TV managed to turn itself off at the start or uh, just after we started. It was very lucky I was towards the back otherwise there would have been a monumental crash. Uh, fortunately only one car was affected drove into the back of me because I just couldn't go anywhere. Um, so yeah, me and a Ferrari were quite damaged. You saw there there's a very laggy bore that I believe hit the curve a bit hard, went up on two wheels and uh, took some people with him and then Husky gets a little bit bullied uh, and out sideways. However, it was uh, a relatively, and I say relatively, clean, clean start for a versus the community race anyway. Uh, Infineon NASCAR is quite a good track uh, for, for starts. The first couple of corners are a little bit tricky, but there's not the big sort of concertina effect into a very, very slow corner. So the starts tend not to be too bad as an escort goes very, very wide uh, through here. Now, for, for this race, cars could be converted to four-wheel drive. So Husky is driving an MR2 that's being converted, and there'll be various other cars as well around that, uh, that have been converted to four-wheel drive. So yeah, but that, that, was, that was all allowed. And Husky was starting to make a little bit of progress through the field. Despite my abysmal start, I was actually not that far off the pack as everybody goes in 2x2 two two around that final corner. Uh, Husky's car was built in, I think he said 5 minutes or 10 minutes before the start of this race. Uh, so he wasn't the world well, as happy with his car as, uh, as normal. It was a little bit difficult to drive the MR2 and it wasn't particularly fast in a straight line. So yeah, Husky was struggling a bit. He has a Cosworth uh, behind him and a Alfa Barrera that were pressuring him. They're trying to find a way to get past. My fairly good start, despite my despite my various problems, wasn't to last long. I was still concerned about my TV decided. It wasn't so much a TV turn off, it was like losing the signal from the HDMI, which was quite bad. Uh, and I was finding that, trying to find a way past uh, an Audi TT. I tried to be a little bit sneaky uh, go up the inside and just run out of room and ended up getting spun off. It's a good thing I did get spun off there though because if I'd made the corner about two seconds later my TV decided to turn itself off again and then I probably would have ploughed into somebody. So I had kind of pulled over and went off to try and get my TV working again. So yeah, it wasn't the most successful start to a versus the community race for me ever. Uh, luckily there's plenty of run up area I can park my car over here <laughs> while I fiddle with stuff to try to get sure, uh, try to make sure sorry that it was working again. Up at the front and Skyline was leading. I was expecting to have uh, these are the most popular cars with well, the PM million skylines I think it was probably the most popular of car however there wasn't too many of them there we weren't overrun with skylines I think there were two in this race I think there's three or four overall and um, it, it's good we haven't had any versus the community where it's been really dominated by one sort of car I mean last week's rally car one there are a lot of Fiat's um, but yeah we have, we've done fairly well for variety uh, behind behind the skylines yeah, it's a big lock up you don't want to be doing that uh, behind it there are two S Cosworths that uh, well, using all of the road and a little bit more. They're four-wheel drive cars. They can get away with that. This section, I love this section of track. Some of my favourite corners uh, are down this section. Uh, it's very, very hard to overtake. You, it can be done. If you get an overtake done here, down here, well done, because it's incredibly risky, especially through here. I love this corner. It's such a fun corner to drive. Very tricky corner, as the Red Escort proves, as he just outbreaks himself a little bit, runs wide, and bumps it into the wall. Uh, the Ferrari that I, well, that I may have slightly damaged, we didn't have too much damage. I think he only had aero damage from my start line cock up, uh, was having problems. The Ferrari <laughs> wasn't the best car, so, so we were being told. He was struggling with this thing, and there's a Toyota MR2 as everybody runs very wide, using all of the track and a little bit more there from the Audi. Um, yeah, the MR2 is looking around, sniffing for a way past. Problem is, the Ferrari is very quick in a straight line. That makes it very hard to overtake. We see this every week. If you have that bit of straight line speed, you can make your car very awkward to get past, because while the MR2 is so much faster through these corners, the minute it straightens up, Ferrari's gone again. So by the time it comes to a braking zone, as Husky's got an Alpha all over the back of him, uh, by the time it comes to a braking zone, you see how much of a gap the Ferrari's pulled. It doesn't help when the MR2 uh, does a little bit of rally crossing. But yeah, if you, if that far, that higher straight line speed, if you can hold on to the car through the corners, you can make it very, very difficult 
for, for somebody to overtake over at this stage of the race it was everybody was fairly close uh, which was which is good to see uh, Husky was in pretty much a race long battle with this with this Alpha Romeo the Alpha was considerably faster in a straight line uh, whereas Husky's MR2 was better through the corners the Alpha was taking all sorts of uh, interesting lines <laughs> Uh, through here, I think the Alpha was quite a lot of a handful. As you see a skyline in the background, also being a handful and and sliding off. Yeah, there is um interesting interesting choice of cars. Eventually, Husky just runs out of runs out of grip. Uh, building a four wheel drive car can be quite tricky. All of these cars are running with standard diffs, so we couldn't you couldn't like fiddle about with the power power distribution to keep things even. So yeah, building a car, choosing your car to run with was was quite was quite tricky. And four wheel drive cars on fours of four can be a bit of a pain. They can be quite understeer. They can be quite hard to drive, especially well. These are more powerful. Uh, Four-wheel drive car, shall we say? After recovering from my uh, my TV issues and slightly broken car, I then made things ten times worse as I managed to roll it, going up the top of whatever hill this is. Yeah, it, <laughs> things weren't going to plan. Uh, despite sort of, I had major aero damage, I had brake damage, suspension. The engine was a little bit damaged, not too bad. Thankfully, I hadn't taken the steering out. But uh, yeah, my my Porsche. I love this car. This is probably one of my favourite cars I've ever built for any of these races. It wasn't looking particularly healthy. Uh, the Ferrari, he was also starting to drop back. I mean, okay, we had a bit of aero damage from the start, but this car was, uh, yeah, it was struggling <laughs> around this track. It was now being chased by an Evo and a very, very laggy uh, Bora, I think that is. You can just, just watch it in the background jumping around. Yeah, that's quite a lot of lag. The Ferrari then finds a completely new place to roll a car that I've never seen before. Um, that's uh, an interesting curb to roll off of. There's barely even a curb there. I'm not sure how we managed to do that one. He significantly killed his engine more than I did. That was quite a broken Ferrari now, as you see him going down the escape road. Uh, doing well to keep out of everybody's way. That's what you do if your car's broken, people. Um, keep your car out of the way. Back towards the front, and the Barrera had sort of made a little bit of a gap back to Husky, and it was now chasing the Escort Cosworth, and again, we have a very similar situation. The Escort, much better. The Barrera is making up entirely new racetracks. Um, yeah, the Escort Cosworth, much, much better through the corners. The Barrera, an absolute handful, by the looks of things, um, but significantly faster in a straight line. Yeah, this is a, this is a sort of race thing that we see regularly on here, and... While, it can, while you can, I personally think it's a bit easier to overtake and defend with a faster car. If you are having troubles keeping it on the road, then that is also a problem. Uh, the Ferrari went to the pits, uh, fixed it itself, and well, he, he may have copied me a little bit and managed to roll going up the hill as well. I'm not sure how, how he managed that one. Also, there wasn't a huge amount of action going on in this race. Things got quite spread out at this point, so I was just trying to find something that was going on. And yeah, the Ferrari managed to roll and roll so far off camera. Uh, then we have, I might have the record here for the fastest rollover reco recovery unit. So my Porsche was pretty dead at this point, and I wasn't really too bothered about the race, and the Ferrari was rolling onto the track. So we went for a little nudge, and we've recovered the Ferrari very, very quickly, which is amazing. The amount of times we've been stuck trying to roll a car over before and it's just not worked and um, I didn't lose too much time and got the thing righted I mean, it was so wrecked it couldn't get back to the pits but we managed to get the Ferrari out of the way so it wasn't gonna wasn't going to roll onto the track and I could chase after a skyline up towards the front again the the pack did sort of close up on the very final lap I think Husky closed up to the Barrera again and this uh, MR2 caught up to a skyline the MR2 got the move done fairly successfully there the skyline's trying to get a little bit of a cutback but the MR2 just has so much more grip. Yeah, the field was a little bit. There wasn't a huge amount of overtaking in this one. It did get. It did get a little bit uh, spread out. Anyway, at the front, it was one of the escorts that was going to take the win. Found a fairly easy pass on the skyline, or whatever. You can see me in the <laughs> in the pink skyline are having a battle, almost a lap down. And um, yeah, I mean this escort actually didn't start. I think he started alongside me. He started right near the back, or fairly fairly well down. Just stayed out of trouble. Uh, didn't take any damage. That's, that's one of the key things with this. If you don't take any damage, you're going to you're going to stand a good chance of doing well in one of these and manage to make his way to the front in a very uh, fairly good first race. Not for me, but for everybody else, it seemed to go fairly well. We move on to race number two at the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit this time. Daniel had managed to join us. He had internet problems and couldn't make it for the first race, but he was here uh, for this one. He's driving a Volvo, something or other. Can't remember what it is. Uh, anyway, me and Husky had started right down 
down the back yet again. There was a little bit of bumping into the first corner. However, we all got through fairly cleanly as something goes flying off in the background. I'm not sure. I think that was an old Supra, possibly. Um, yeah, it was. A, Silverstone's a pretty good track for this sort of racing because the first corner here is very fast and these next few corners are very fast. You don't have the big braking zones. So there's not normally too big of a crash as there can be, but on the most part, we tend to get away with it. Uh, when we run around here. My Porsche was pretty good in a straight line. It was certainly faster than Husky's MR2. Well, I was, it was a little bit uh, ambitious trying to go around the outside as he runs wide on the exit. I can bring my car to a fairly fairly successful cutback. Helps that he runs a little bit wide onto the grass. Now I am going to chase down Daniel in his Volvo as a BMW. He goes very, very wide. Panics me a little bit as he's trying to come back on the track. I may have almost rolled my car on the opening lap at Silverstone. Yeah, this car is really very, very nice to drive. It's a good all-round car as well, but it uh, it doesn't like curbs at, at all, pretty much. At the front, and there was a, a three-way battle for the lead, but an odd battle of cars. Between an Alfa, I think it's an Alfa GTA, a Ferrari GTO, and a Volkswagen Bora. Not normal sort of racing uh, you would you would expect to see. Either way, the uh, the Ferrari is going to get. This is my favourite overtaking spot uh, of this of this silver track. It's a great place to catch people out. It's a better line through bridge, and at the inside of whatever that corner's called helps when the uh, <laughs> when the Alfa runs a little bit wide. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good, it's, it's a very good overtaking spot that one. This track can be a little bit of a pain to overtake on uh, sometimes, especially if you haven't got a car with an awful lot of straight line speed. But, um, yeah, that's, that's a good place for general cars. Also, I love the size of the wing on this Ferrari. It's got a humongous wing uh, on that thing. Daniel was having some issues cutting through the pack while his Volvo was very, very good through the corners. Probably one of the best handling cars here. Um, it wasn't very quick in a straight line. I mean, Husky's car was fairly slow in a straight, uh, but it was faster than this Volvo. This Volvo was, yeah, it was probably the slowest car here in a straight line, but it was incredibly quick through the corner. So it, it was, over the course of a lap, it was probably one of the quickest, but it lost all of it on the straight. Um, he did a very brave pass going around sort of the outside of somebody through the uh, the Maggots and Beckett's corners. For me, that's probably overtake of the afternoon doing that, because that is is a terrifying place to try and overtake somebody and it all comes to nothing because the Alpha goes flying straight back past him when he gets onto the straight you can see my Porsche is catching as well yeah this Volvo I don't know quite how it's built it could have a lot of downforce uh, but yeah it really struggles in a straight line of course the minute we get to a corner and he makes all of that time up he's lost uh, on the straight almost he's right back on the boot of the Alpha the Alpha is going very very defensive it's not going to matter though because the Volvo has just got so much more grip tries to get his car up the inside. The Alpha's trying his best to cover, but he can't cover well enough. Uh, I'm now going around to the outside as well. The minute we're on a straight, and then the Alpha's gone. I'm also fairly far, fairly large amount faster. I don't care anymore. Uh, English just didn't function in that sentence. Uh, there's a bit of a coming together with me and the Alpha. I, I took a little bit of a dive and I don't think he saw me coming. Uh, in the end, Daniel comes off the better of it. I'm trying to go around the outside, but I just don't have the grip of the Volvo. So I can't, I can't hold that manoeuvre uh, this time around and have to sort of slot in behind him. Yeah, on that occasion, I, I may have... Uh, busted my car a little bit uh, with that collision so I had some slightly damaged error I apologize to the Alpha uh, on that front this is, is further back I'm not sure quite what position it's for but uh, it's a death race style Bentley I do quite like the paint job on this thing it's kind of cool um, either way this car mighty mighty fast in the straight line and uh, much faster than the skyline that it was battling with but not very good through the corners as you would imagine the Bentley Continental is a massive thing weighs an awful lot not sure if it has race weight reduction on it or not but uh, yeah not that good through the corners as demonstrated by uh, I don't know how on earth you go that far off the track at Maggots and Beckett's but uh, yeah cars like these while very good uh, on the straight bits get to struggle through the corners me and Daniel are continuing our march up through the pack as we are fighting our way past a Bora that's painted like a is it a Jetta or something that's in the first Fast and Furious film I think that's what this paint it looks like it um, either way yeah we, we were making our way through the order we were bringing Husky with us as well uh, while Husky's car doesn't really suit this track this track's a little bit too fast if you like too many straights uh, for the little MR2 he was he was sort of just about tagging along with us and as the Bora runs a little bit too wide uh, into the into the sort of chicane bit me and Daniel are trying to go too wide through bridge again I, I chickened out of it that time uh, Husky was trying to get a better run on the Bora ended up running straight into the back of it but it doesn't really matter anyway as the Bora understeers uh, not sure 
uh, that's the problem with these four-wheel drive cars. You can just get that bit of understeer if you haven't quite built it right. Uh, um, yeah, it's kind of an unavoidable thing with four-wheel drive cars, which is why I was, <laughs> when we did the rally cars, I was hoping they were going to be more sort of a more mix of drive trains, and we just went rear-wheel drive. That's why we're doing four-wheel drive today to actually make people uh, run four-wheel drive cars. Either way, as we as, the, as we progressed through the race, me and Daniel were both catching up to the back of the Alpha that was in second. Everything was to go quite badly wrong for Daniel as we go through bridge. Sure enough, the curb claims its first victim. Surprisingly, it wasn't me, uh, as Daniel does. Probably the most spectacular of it. It definitely wins flip of the uh, flip of the evening. That was a massive crash uh, in the Volvo. Yeah, just take too much curb in cars that are very, very high grip. And that is the sort of thing that can happen. Amazingly, despite that incredibly spectacular crash, the Volvo is still going. Well, I say amazingly, it is a Volvo. It is a bit of a tank. But uh, yeah, despite all of that, the Volvo is still moving. Uh, but he's doing a good job of keeping out of the way of everybody so he doesn't screw up somebody else's race. And the front, though, it had been a fairly, fairly straightforward race for the Ferrari, really. He got to the lead at the end of the first lap and then pretty much vanished up the road. I think fastest lap-wise, me and Daniel, despite having rather damaged cars, well, I say rather, we had a bit of aero on the most, most sides, uh, the Ferrari's lap time wasn't massively, massively quicker than us. If we hadn't been caught up in the pack, I think it could have been a very interesting race at the front, as all of our cars had different strengths and weaknesses. But, um, yeah, I think the, the Ferrari was a blooming quick car around here, and if you can get away at the start of the race and avoid the chaos, you're probably going to do pretty well. It was the battle for second that was the most interesting thing uh, on the final lap between me and the Alpha. With Daniel out of the way, it was just pretty much two of us left. The Husky was a kind of just about visible behind us, but uh, yeah, he was struggling to keep up. This Alpha was blooming quick in a straight line. My Porsche is one of the quicker cars here. Uh, yeah, the Alpha is very, very fast. There's Husky, I think you can just about see him uh, in the background there. But through the corners, the Porsche is an awful lot better. The Porsche is very good overall. I was hoping I could do like, my favourite manoeuvre off the bridge. However, I got a little bit scared uh, taking that corner. I was running a little bit closer to the curb and having seen Daniel just roll it and me having rolled in the previous race, I backed out of it. However, with just much, much better handling, much better brakes, I could get the move done on the next corner. However, with the speed of this Alpha, I was still quite concerned of being out dragged to the finish line. So I had to get a really, really good exit off this final corner. Didn't need to make any mistakes. Otherwise, the Alpha would have me because it is so fast in a straight line not sure by the sounds of it it might have a different engine in it could have an 8c engine in it for all i know uh yeah that thing was mighty quick and i just just managed to get it to the start line if it had been any longer back straight or front straight or whatever i would have been gone we move on to our third and final race at nurburgring gp and while everything had gone fairly well up until now it all went abysmal in the first corner. It, there was just a huge crash. Not sure quite what caused it, but uh, yeah, everybody bounced off each other. Uh, I ended up in the wall with broken steering. Some of the Audis pushed each other around and ended up taking out an MRS. I think an Escort Cosworth got killed. Um, in, in the entirety of that first corner, I think all but the top six cars were broken, quite heavily broken as well. It was the least successful as there was more crashing going on now, as you can hear. Uh, it was not a successful start to this race. It's one of the problems with Nürburgring. Quite often you have that at the first corner here because it's such a tight corner. At the front, though, and five cars, I think, made it through. Uh, five or six cars made it through. I can't quite remember how many I said now. Um, yeah, a few a few people got through. Husky, despite starting right at the back with me, was, was smart. He had his car on the inside for that first corner, managed to avoid all the chaos, and already found himself up in third. That's not bad uh, to have made that many positions yeah, in a few corners. Uh, Daniel and the Skyline both started towards the front, and Daniel does another fairly impressive overtake around the outside of the Skyline, but it's Husky who gets the best drive over the top of the hill. I think Daniel's on two wheels at one point and Husky manages to make up two positions in one sort of small straight uh, yeah that's that's a pretty damn good overtake good opportunistic overtaking move there and as we come on to the back straight you'll see that the the MR2 is a little bit quicker than the Volvo the Skyline is quite a lot quicker than the pair of them problem is this back straight you can't really overtake into the chicane it's such a small braking zone such a fast corner and a very narrow corner at that you know even if you've got the straight line speed advantage unless you've got sort of decent track position you're not really going to overtake into there or you're going to have to rely on the other person being very very lenient and giving you plenty of space 
However, down this back straight, or this front straight, I should say, sorry, uh, this is a good place. The first corner is a good place to overtake when there's not a million cars around you, um, because it's a big straight followed by one of the biggest break, well, the biggest braking zone on this track. So the Skyline is going to try and have a look. Daniel moves to the inside uh, to try and go defensive as they jump on the brakes. Daniel's car is just too good through the corners. He's got so much grip and brakes so late. Uh, the Skyline is having some trouble. He's trying to go around the outside, um, and you find himself on the inside for the next corner. There's a little bit of a bump. Uh, between them again, Daniel's car's got so much grip, he can just hold that outside line and stay there. Next corner, Skyline looks like he might have just about got it, but again, the grip of the Volvo means Daniel can do sort of a double cutback. And with a little bit of assistance, <laughs> I saw that on the exit of the corner, uh, he can move back up into second. This is all giving uh, Husky some breathing space <laughs> to, to second place, which is kind of useful uh, when you've got a very, very fast Volvo chasing after you. Skyline's looking for another way past, but uh, yeah, it's going to be quite tricky getting past a car with that much more grip uh, with only one really good sort of long straight into a braking zone. The other, the other good battle uh, that was going on was in 4th and 5th between a Peugeot 205 T16 and a Subaru Impreza 22B. Uh, good to see somebody representing the Peugeots. As much as I love this car, it's not the greatest of race cars in my opinion. Uh, it's it's very, hard, very hard to build one of these and tune one of these. I can never blow and make it work for whatever class it is. But this one seems to be doing pretty well. It was fairly good in a straight line, which is where these cars seem to really struggle. So yeah, he, he seems to have built his pretty damn well uh, and was holding off a Subaru, uh, Subaru for now. Again, like behind these guys, everybody was broken. Uh, the Peugeot was very, very slow through that corner. The Subaru is looking maybe into the final corner, a little bit too far back for that one. Um, these two were pretty evenly matched on the straight as well, which is made, made for an interesting battle. Uh, the Subaru got a better run out of that final corner, but can't quite can't quite do anything with it. The Peugeot, maybe a little bit of an advantage in that <laughs> in that straight line speed section, but uh, yeah, they're fairly close then. Lot uh, back towards the front, and there was nothing interesting going on in this race really. Uh, it was it was the battle between Daniel and Husky that was the most interesting of all, and yeah, Husky was finding himself having to go defensive. And the problem is, while he's got the straight line speed, well, just about got the straight line speed, even with sort of Daniel in the slipstream, the Volvo isn't really that quick. Um, he was finding himself having to start thinking about going defensive, and the minute you start going defensive, that's when you're in trouble. When you've got this sort of this sort of gap between you, you're probably going to be all right. And as they run up towards the chicane, you're Husky's not having to worry uh, about going defensive and uh, up towards the final corner he's probably going to have a big enough gap. The problem is he's got the car with the, the, the slightly faster straight line speed. The minute he has to start going defensive at the end of a straight, that's when you know you're in trouble because the minute you start going defensive you're going to be start slowing yourself down, you're going to be taking wrong lines and then you're going to have the car it's just going to be sat on your back bumper for, for the rest of the lap. You can see now if Husky's having to go defensive into the first corner where he should be strongest uh, over the Volvo down this back straight. That's when you, yeah, you're in trouble. It's basically now cling on for dear life and hope the guy behind you makes a mistake. Because, yeah, that Volvo is mighty, mighty good through the corners. And it's only going to be a matter of time uh, before Daniel finds his way past. Again, Husky's trying to defend, trying to take slightly odd lines. You can see Daniel is uh, taking, taking the more traditional racing line. Husky's trying to hug the inside, make it as hard for the Volvo as possible. And of course, he's now getting slow exits out onto these sort of small straights, which isn't going to help uh, help defend from the Volvo. Daniel's going to try to go around the outside of the first part and have the as the corner course sorry bends the other way. Then he can get the inside. A little bit of lag from the Volvo. Uh, which, uh, yeah, can, uh, can scare somebody who's on the outside of you if you see the car on the inside jumping around a little bit. Uh, and Daniel has managed to find his way past. All the meantime, the Skyline was doing a fairly good job of sort of keeping just about within touching distance of them, just in case they run into each other or make a silly mistake. Uh, the Skyline was there. But yeah, Daniel uh, got past and it wasn't long before he vanished off up the road. As I said, there was everything was broken. My car had terrible steering problems. I also managed to roll it at some point that did no more damage than it already had. Uh, most cars were smoking uh, from sixth backwards. I think this is me just getting into sixth now. Everybody further back was some or has huge degrees of damage. Some engine, some aero, some steering. It, yeah, there was lots of broken cars um, in this one. Which, uh, yeah, it's a bit of a shame. It's probably been the scrappiest. Well, to be fair, it's just the first sort of three quarters that everything went wrong in. And, yeah, we kind of all ended up a little bit broken. 
as they were still fighting <laughs> despite having broken cars they, they were still fighting and there really wasn't a huge amount going on in this race this was the most interesting battle of the broken cars because they were kind of close for a while but it was, it was pretty much just a case of if your car had less damage than the car in front of you you caught up and went past them fairly straightforwardly so yeah this wasn't the, the most exciting of races uh, that we've ever done really it was yeah it was it was a little bit dull it was a little bit crashy um which is a show this is not a bad track to be racing around but yeah one of those things it happens occasionally um hopefully it won't happen again for a while anyway daniel was going to take the win he pulled out quite a gap to husky this volvo was working very well around the nurburgring gp track uh, husky came in second the skyline came in third i think i managed to come the best of the broken in sixth husky's car was also the only car in the entire lobby to finish without any damage daniel and the skyline had a little bump at some point on the first lap so they both had small amounts of aero damage yeah husky's mr2 the only car to have no damage anyway that is it um for for this for this ferris first community first couple of races were pretty good the third one didn't quite go, go didn't quite go to plan and i ended up on my roof quite a lot um, but yeah it was it wasn't too bad all things considered now for next week's Oh, sorry, I should say this week's race, next week's video. Uh, the race will take place on Thursday, the 12th of December. We'll be starting at 7 p.m. GMT time. We are going to be running A-class movie cars. So you're going to have to be using a car, like a famous movie car. I'm not just talking about a car that has been in a movie in the back of a shot of a film, because that could be any car in this entire game. It's got to be a famous movie car um, to take part. When you sign up on the forums to take part in this event, if you put your car in there, if there is a car that I, am go I, que I will question, uh, then I will reply to the thread on there. So if you have any queries about your car, just ask before you post up. Or I'll ask before you use that, that car. I'm fairly sure you guys can come up with famous movie cars. It's not that hard to do. There's plenty There's plenty of cars to choose from. Uh, I, I'm going to say that there are going to be no banned cars for this. However, if you are a top sort of driver, if you're expecting to do very well in these, don't turn up in a blooming leaderboard car. It's more fun if we have a varied grid. We run slightly different cars. Don't want everybody to turn up in a Mark II Escort or everybody turn up in whatever car tops the leaderboards because that just makes things very boring. So yeah, if, if you're likely to be towards the front of, front of the pack, don't use the ultimate fastest leaderboard tuned cars because then that gets very, very boring. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's about it. If you want to sign up, then you can go to our forums. There'll be a link in the description. You find Fair Race versus the community section and that is where that is where you sign up uh, to take part. However, that is it for today. So thank you very much for watching and until next time, goodbye.